Hi, so we're going to make ourselves a hot wire cutter for future projects. And what we're going to make it from is this thing. This is an old computer I had. And uh, the only test I've done is to plug it in and make sure the power button gets the fan spinning. So it should be fine. Now in there is a power supply and that's what we actually want. So what we're going to do is strip it out, clean it up, but leave the power supply in place. Now we're using that because it is a structure that's quite sturdy and it has a power supply. But if you don't have one of these, then you can just build a box and get yourself a power supply. Uh, you need something around about 12 volts, something like that, a power brick. It's got four amps on it, somewhere between four and six amps output is going to be fine. So you can just use one of those and build a box. It happens that we have one of these and you can find these things lying around everywhere actually. And we're going to reuse the power supply and we're going to reuse the box in order to make our hot wire cutter. Now obviously a few other little bits and pieces we need but it's surprisingly little that you actually need. One of the really useful things is one of these. This is a speed controller. Now a speed controller actually um, most of them run on pulse width modulation just like this one says. And pulse width modulation can be used to control current to just about everything not just motors. Now a hot wire cutter is just current to a resistor and if we can control that we can control the temperature of that, of that um, wire and so we can control the cutting temperature and that's what this is for. Now it's given us percentage which is just great rather than speed because it's the percentage amount that you're letting in there and you do that with this little potentiometer and it's a nice off on switch. So we're going to use a pulse width modulator speed controller to control the temperature of the wire and that's how we're going to control it. So you need to grab one of them. Now you can make that circuit and there's a load of them actually they're really quite easy to make from an Arduino but this thing costs five pounds. You need to make sure it'll take the ampage so we're going to put maximum six amps through it so as long as it'll take six amps at 12 volts it's just going to be fine and, and that's exactly what that one does. You also need a bit of something to support the wire, so that's a bit of 6mm steel rod, and we'll be bending that later when we stick it in here. But the first thing, really, is to get this stripped out and cleaned up. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do all the screws and pull out all the bits and pieces that I just don't need. And there's quite a lot of them. Now, it's quite, there we go, it's quite old, so I don't intend on being particularly careful with it. Okay, so I've stripped everything out and we're ready to go. I've even taken the ATX power supply out because we want to do some modifications. Now, I've taken the top off the power supply. You don't need to, you could just do this leaving the top on. And what we've got is a massive bundle of wires. Now, these things are immensely useful and people do all kinds of stuff with them. The most popular thing is a desktop, benchtop power supply. And that's because all of these wires, actually, are colour-coded and all do pretty much the same thing. There's only so many of them just to spread the load, but you can bring them all together for their colour and it will be what that colour is. So, for example, all of the yellow wires carry 12 volts and they all go to the same point on the circuit board, actually. If we bundle those together, twist them and solder them, that's our 12 volt out and it's positive 12 volts. Now we're going to run this hot wire cutter, so it's actually only the 12 volt that we're interested in. All the rest, we don't have to do anything with it actually, you just leave it alone. Um, but we want all of the yellow wires bundled together for the 12 volts. And of course the black wires are the ground, so we want all of the black wires. The red wires are the 5 volts. Uh, if you're making a power supply, you do the same thing, bundle the 5 volts together. The, uh, says he, having a look, the orange wires, they're the 3.3 volts, incidentally. And that deals with all of those. And then we've got this block, which was the original pin connector. And it's pretty much the same story. You've got a load of orange, a load of red, a load of black, and a, a yellow. Those ones, again, we just bundle together with these same ones. And that'll leave you with a few weird coloured ones. You're going to have some blue, some a green, a brown, maybe a grey and a purple. Now sometimes there's a white wire in there, but that was removed later on. The blue wire is the minus 12 volts, so we're not going to use that uh, unless you want a minus 12 volts, obviously. The brown wire is a 3.3 volt sense wire. You don't have to do anything with that, you just clip it in with all of the other orange wires if you want your 3.3 volts out. We don't, so we're just going to ignore it. The green wire is the one that we really want. You can't ignore it. And that's the power on sense wire. What you have to do with that is uh, connect it to ground. So you take one black wire, one green wire, and just solder them together. And then the power supply will turn on. If you don't do that, it won't turn on. 
It is quite handy actually because um, this particular power supply has no on off switch at the back. And as we're going to be making a hot wire cutter, we really don't want to be reaching round the wire, turning it on. So we can use that to put a switch on the front so that we can flip that switch and it will start the power supply. Without that, it won't start. So it can be really handy to connect those just to a normal single pole, single throw switch and it becomes an on switch where you can put it anywhere you like. So the front is a nice place to put it. If you made it a contact switch, actually, it would also operate as a safety switch. Here we're just going to put a flip switch on the front and use that as our actual switch. The grey and purple wire, actually, are kind of um, really interesting. You don't need to use them. The purple wire is, in fact, the standby. If you wire that to an LED, and you use a drop-down resistor of some like, something like 330 ohms, but you wire that to an LED, when you turn on the mains power, that LED light will come on. When you flip the wire that's uh, sent them for the green sense wire, then this grey wire is the power good, so that will come on. So we can use that as light indicators on the front um, to tell us that we've got an actual supply to the box and that the box is actually on. If we flip the green wire switch off, then that grey wire will go off. So that can be really useful just as an indicator. Don't need to use them, but if you've got them, why not use them? So we'll probably wire a couple of LEDs to that so that we get a, an indication of the state of the machine. And, and that's it really. There's often a white wire, as I say, it's missing on this one, so it doesn't matter. All we have to do is clip all of these open, so cut off the ends, clip out the ties, gather them together. The ones that you don't want, you can terminate and just leave dangling. The ones that you do want, then we're going to um, put that onto a proper termination so we can connect to it. And you can either clip those off, the ones that you don't want, and the board, or just terminate them and leave them. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So there you go, all back together, bundled up, snipped off, and it makes it much, much easier. That's obviously all of your neutrals, a nice black wire. There's your 12 volts, that's your 12 volt positive, the yellow. This one is going to be our on switch on the front, and this is a couple of indicator lights to tell us the state of play. So that's probably the most difficult bit to do. As you can see, all I've done is flip it over and put this little um, gibbet on, I suppose. It looks like a hangman's gibbet, doesn't it? I was going to use this stuff, 6mm rod, and bend it into shape, but to be honest, I've got quite a lot of this lying around and I just like the look of it because, you know, with the alley sort of case look, this seemed to fit. So all I did was that. Now, I did do something else because obviously what we do is we just suspend the heating wire from this point through a hole in here to the other connection point. That's all you do. But I want a little hook and because it's all sort of metal. I don't think it really matters, but it just, I decided I wanted some insulation. So I took a power transistor. Now that's obviously a ceramic that will um, cope with the heat and give insulation. So I drilled a hole through there, bent the little feet over to make a hook, soldered a wire to it, and that will just fasten on there like that. And then my wire will go onto that hook straight down to a hole. I'm just going to drill the hole, make the other connection, wire it up, and we're done. OK, so here's the underneath of it, and uh, really it is pretty simple stuff. There's the negative, there's the positive, as we identified. I've soldered a wire to them. Same thing here, that's going to the control board. We'll have that in a minute. Returns back from the control board, and there it is, the live wire going up the gibbet that we put on. And there's the neutral wire connecting to this bolt. This bolt is just stuck through a piece of wood that's glued onto there. And there's the top end of a bolt there. There's a couple of washers. So we just wrap the wire around those washers and tighten that down. It's better if that's a wing nut, but I don't have one, so I'm just using a normal nut. And that's your connections, that's all there is to it. So once we've done that, we really can have a look at the faceplate. Okay, I'm going to um, put this back on, which is the original cover plate that came with it. So I cut a bit of alley, hit the little fit in where the CD drives used to go. And I put the speed controller that we're going to use as a temperature controller. There's the potential stat and there's the on-off switch. And we're going to put a couple of LEDs in there. Those LEDs will show standby and power. Now remember, you don't need to do that. And if we fold that over, all those connections are just... Um, the, the potentiometer came connected. And the um, back of the speed controller tells you power and motor. So the motor goes to the heater, in fact. And the power comes from the modified power supply that we've just done. And... Here are those three wires that we looked at. So the green and the black will go to the switch because that's the one that turns it on. We plug it in, 
give that switch on and it starts the ATX power supply. Now I've also saved the purple and the grey because remember there's uh, power good and standby. And one grey, one black, one purple, one black. So one grey, one black goes to one LED, one purple, one black goes to the other. And so we get a standby and a power good LED light. So we just have to solder those in with a, somewhere between a 200 and a 400 ohm resistor and we're away. Okay, that's it. I actually think it looks pretty nice. So you can see my little aluminium plate, mounted all that stuff there, and I've hung some cancel wire. Now you're supposed to have a spring here, and you have a spring because when the wire gets um, a bit hot, it stretches and the spring takes up that stretch. I haven't got a spring, I'll get a spring sorted out for it later. I just wanted to give it a go, basically. And you can see it's plugged in because the standby light is on. And if we turn that on, there we go, the power light is now on. I've got this at 26% and it's busy heating that up. I've got a bit of polystyrene foam and we can cut through that foam. There we go. Hot wire cutter. It's awesome. Now you know what kind of ham, um, what wire to put in incidentally is V equals IR. So we know what the voltage is, it's 12 volts. We know we need to keep it uh, less than about six amps or so. So we know the resistance has got to be um, uh, two ohms is going to be the maximum. And that's what we have to put it at. It's busy burning the polystyrene off. We can twiddle the power up a little bit on this by turning that percentage. When we turn the percentage, it'll get hotter. If we turn it down, it gets colder. And we can use that extra power or lack of power to increase or decrease the temperature of the wire for cutting other things apart from polystyrene. Anyway, that's how you turn an old computer into a hot wire cutter. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.